So what, in my opinion, is the most important part of any studio portrait session? Well, it's got to be the light. No light, no photos. After that, there's some other really important stuff. Hello, I'm Gavin Hoey, and you're watching Adorama TV, brought to you by Adorama, the camera store that's got everything for us photographers. And in this video, I'm going to talk about one of the things that's easily overlooked, but if you get it right, can really elevate your portraits, and that is props, specifically a chair. I'm going to show you three different ways I can use this chair in my small home studio to create some amazingly beautiful photos. And it really doesn't matter what chair you use. I've chosen this one because the colour of the seat matched the colour of the background. That was it. So whilst I'm getting a few things set up, you should click on the subscribe button and the bell icon so you never miss a video right here on Adorama TV. I'm going to get a light set. Let's get a model in, sat on the chair and let's get shooting. So to help me out today, I've got the awesome Chloe. Chloe's going to be the model for this photo shoot and I'm going to start with an overhead light. Way up there I've got a Flashpoint Explore 300. It's in a fairly large strip box. The idea with this is it should give me nice directional light which should be fairly dramatic and because it's quite high hopefully it'll give me fairly even light but let's just meter it to see what we're getting. I'm working at f5.6 and that's what the light meters at. I've got my ISO at 200 and my shutter speed 250th of a second, the native settings for my camera. Let's take a test photo with this light, see what we get. Uh, oh, spoiler alert, this isn't going to be the best lighting. It will get better. Okay, Chloe, here we go. Quick little test photo. So Chloe's going to look at me, and when she does, I get actually not too bad lighting on Chloe. I don't mind that. I think we can do a little bit better. But if you look at Chloe's eyes, you can see that they are fairly dark pools of light. The solution for this is simply to ask your subject to look towards the light source. But I think we can do slightly better with the light position. So what I've done is I've changed the height of the light. So now it's much lower down and that's going to have a couple of changes. The first one is, well, the exposure has shifted. I needed 1 8th power and now at 1 32nd power to get the same f5.6 aperture. From Chloe's point of view, the light's also bigger, which means she won't have to look up quite so much to try and get that light in her eyes. She'll still need to look up a little bit. And because it is much closer, the fall off of light is going to be much more dramatic. So now I've got the exposure right roughly for Chloe's face, but by the time it gets down to her feet and the floor, it should be much more darker and much more dramatic. That's the idea. Let's take a test photo. Chloe, are you ready? Okay, here we go. Let's see how this looks. And the difference between these two is quite significant. So now we have much more dramatic lighting. That looks really good. Of course, this is all about the chair for this setup. So I've spun the chair around and now we can see more of the chair than we did before. Let's see how this light works with the chair. Okay, Chloe, here we go. It's not bad, but we could do a little bit better because that chair is in shadow, which isn't surprising considering the position of the light. My solution for this is just a simple reflector. It's going to act as a second light, bouncing the key light in and filling the shadows a little bit. But positioning of this is absolutely critical. I could do trial and error, that would work. Or I could use the modeling light actually in the Explore 300 and, and actually see where the light it needs to go. So it needs to go about there. That should do the trick. OK, let's take a test photo like that and see if it does the job. OK, Chloe, here we go. And that just pushes a little bit of light into the front, but not enough to overpower the key light, just enough to give me a little bit of interest in there. And I think that looks fantastic. So that's the first lighting look set. So I think we should take a few photos like this. Chloe, are you ready? OK, here we go. So in this case, I'm using the chair as added texture. It's almost telling part of a story. And when it comes to the post-processing of these images, I've got something in mind for that, and I'll show you at the end of the video.
The second lighting setup is a little bit different. It's still an elevated light source, but this time I've pulled it back and I'm going to do a wider picture. That's going to give Chloe a bit more freedom of movement and it's not going to affect my exposure if she does move, but we do need to make sure the exposure is correct. Still got the same camera settings. Chloe, I'm going to pop this near your chin and I'm still getting f 5.6. So to get this, I'm at 1 8th power. So we've got a little bit of spare capacity within the Explore 300 and plenty of spare room to work with. Let's just see what this looks like. Okay, Chloe, here we go. Quick little test photo. And it looks okay, not bad. I like the shadow in the top right corner, but I'm less happy with the shadow in the lower left corner. So the solution, once again, is going to be a reflector. So I'm going to bring this in around the side. I'll we'll just sort of clamp it in over here. And this is going to bounce a little bit of light just onto the side of Chloe, fill in those shadows areas just a, a little bit. I don't want too much light in there. I just want something because remember, this is all about seeing the chair. The chair is, well, not the star, that's obviously Chloe, but it's an important part of the picture. Okay, Chloe, here we go and that looks much better. I can see it, it's there, it's not overly lit, but it's part of the photo. And because this lighting setup is fairly flexible, I thought let's bring some props in and try and make it a little bit more unusual. So uh, yeah, let's start with this and see how it goes. The reflector is held in place by a small magic arm and a couple of super clamps. I'll put links to the gear I'm using in this video in the description below. This time the chair is more than just something to sit on. I actually want to get the whole thing in the picture. So it's actually guiding my composition and framing my images. My final setup is a little bit different because the lighting has changed but also the purpose of the chair has changed as well because now it's going to give something for Chloe to work with. First of all, let's talk about the lights. So I've got a key light and a background light. I'm going to show you what the background light is doing first of all. Okay, Chloe, quick little test photo. Here we go. And you can see that's just putting a bit of edge light on Chloe just to put some separation against the background. But the background is going to be lit by the key light. And if I add the two lights together, it looks like this. So it's a fairly classic portrait light. However, it's also quite a classic portrait. It's not particularly interesting. So Chloe, can you just spin the chair around 90 degrees so the back of the chair is facing the camera? So I've changed everything around and now Chloe's dynamics on the chair is going to be different as well because now she has something to lean against and to work with. Let's take this photo, here we go. Same lighting, same everything, massive difference in Chloe's posing and potential for posing. So this is going to be my last setup. I think we should take a few photos like this. Chloe, are you ready? Here we go. Another slight advantage of the chair is it gives me a fixed position, something that's not going to move, which means once I've set my lights up, I know the exposure is going to be correct. When it comes to the post-processing I've done, much less than you might imagine. So let's have a look. Here we go into Photoshop and then I'm going to choose layer, new adjustment layer and the key is color lookup. You can give this new layer a name or just click OK and I'm going to change the load 3D LUT and choose from the drop down list futuristic bleak. Now the future isn't that bleak so I'm going to change the opacity for that layer to around about 70%. Then it's just a matter of going back to the adjustment layer, choosing levels this time. And on the levels histogram, I'm going to move the two little sliders in. So I have a pure black and a pure white in there somewhere. It just adds a bit more contrast. And that's it. There's the difference before and after. And my final picture is done.
Right at the start of this video, I said that light was the most important part of the photo session, and it is, but then there is also the choice of model, what they're wearing, the, the background, all of these things combined together, but the props, a good prop, you could do an entire series based around one single prop, or in the case of a chair, you could just have a little sit down at the end and get yourself a bit more comfy. Now, if you've enjoyed this video or you've got any questions, leave me a comment down below. Click on the bell icon and you'll never miss a video right here on Adorama TV. And of course, remember to click on that subscribe button. I'm Gavin Hoey. Thanks for watching.